Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Bissell. Today we are working on Lesson 8-6 in Volume 2 of our textbook. We are on page 487, and we are going to look at how can we find the area of a rectangle with fractional side lengths. And in fourth grade, one of our goals was to be able to understand the concept of area and be able to find it. So if you think back, the term area is used to define the amount of space taken up by a 3D shape or surface. And we measure area in square units. So we can think back, our formula is area equals length times width. All right, and when we are looking for area, some examples in real life would be maybe you and your parents decide you're gonna re-carpet your bedroom. So you need to find the number of square units in your bedroom. Maybe it's yards, maybe it's feet, however your carpet is priced. Or this time of year, your parents might be fertilizing their grass. So in order to know the number of bags of fertilizer to buy, they need to figure out the approximate um, number of square yards in their yard. And that way they buy the appropriate number of bags and they use the appropriate amount of fertilizer in their grass. So this is a concept you're going to use throughout your life. Now, more realistically is that your side lengths are going to be fractional instead of whole numbers. So we need to know how do we find the area of rectangles and squares that have these fractional side lengths. So we're going to start with the solve and share today. A rectangular poster is one fourth yard wide and three fourths yard tall. What is its area? So when we look for area, we are just measuring or multiplying the two lengths. One fourth times three fourths. Okay. Now, the girl here tells us that we can use grid paper as an appropriate tool to figure this out. All right, so if we couldn't remember the formula or how to figure out area, maybe we can remember that we could draw it out with a model. So using the grid paper, and I'm working with force, so one hole would be four units one direction, four units the other. So if I were to use my grid paper, and this is just a small portion of it, this would be one whole unit. But we're not doing whole units. We're doing fractionals. So we're going to use one-fourth for one side length and three-fourths for the next. And we're going to go back to yesterday's lesson where we used models to multiply fractions, two fractions together. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade one-fourth, one out of four of the rows, one direction. We're going to shade three-fourths of the columns another direction. All right. And what I notice is that I have four rows of four squares. So I have 16 total units inside one hole. That's my denominator. That's the number of equal parts in a hole. And I notice that these three right here are where my diagonal lines crisscross. So three of them are where the overlap are. So that represents my answer or the area, three sixteenths of a yard. And if you think back to estimating fractions, half of 16 is eight. A fourth of 16 would be four. So three sixteenths is just under a fourth of a yard, just under a quarter of a yard. All right, let's go ahead and look at the visual learning example on page 488. You're welcome to watch the video that I have posted in Google Classroom. I'm going to kind of talk you through it because I thought that this one was a little bit confusing. This example is going to be a little bit different than the solve and share because instead of having two fractions that are less than a whole, we actually have one fraction less than a whole. But look at this one, this garden has five fourths of a yard in one of its side lengths, which means it's greater than a whole. One whole would be four fourths. So in order to model this, it's a little bit different. All right, so we are going to, first of all, have to figure out how many squares are in one whole. So if you look at your unit fractions, you would have one third and one fourth. So when we multiply those together, we would have 12 rectangles. 
each one would be one, represented as one twelfth. So that's how many we know we need in one whole unit. We need 12 rectangles of equal length or I'm sorry, equal size. All right. Now, step two, we have a rectangle with five fourth yards. So what we actually need to do is we need to draw two holes because one of these side lengths, the five fourths, is going to go into another hole that would also be broken into twelfths. OK, our denominator is going to be twelfths because there are 12 units in a hole. All right. And then I extended this model. Like I said, I thought it was kind of confusing. So here is one unit, one hole broken into 12 equal parts, each measuring 1 12th of a yard. All right. And then I drew an identical one, because if you think about it, that 5 fourths of a yard length is going to extend past one hole. All right, so then when I do my two thirds of a yard one direction and I model my five fourths another direction, the crisscross is where all the color is. It should all be red. They colored one green just to show you that each of these are twelfths and that you have 10 of the twelfths, okay? So that's where we get 10 twelfths, which we know we would simplify and we'd actually simplify it by two halves, a form of one. 10 divided by 2 is 5, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So in simplest form, we really have 5, 6 square yards. All right, let's look at the convince me. Mason has a rectangular garden that is 2 thirds yard wide by 7 fourths yards long. What is the area of Mason's garden? And use the drawing to show your work. Boys and girls, one thing that I did was I actually extended this drawing. Let me explain why. So if we look at the unit fractions, we have thirds times fourths, very similar to above. So what that means is that each one of our little units should be one twelfth and there should be 12 twelfths in one hole. So really there should be 12 twelfths in this next hole. They only had nine. So I extended it so that I had two holes here. I know I'm going to need two holes, each broken up into twelfths because of the fact that the width is longer than one hole. It's seven fourths yards long. All right. So if we were to work with it, two thirds times seven fourths. So we would shade the two thirds one direction. All right. You're going to shade your seven fourths another direction. So we're going to go down to the seven area. All right. And what I see are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 shaded areas. So two thirds times seven fourths. I just said I saw 14 shaded areas. And there are 12 one twelfths in each of these holes. So there are 14 one twelfth pieces or 14 twelfths of a square yard. But wait a minute, that right there is an improper fraction. So to put it in terms we understand, let's convert it. 12 goes into 14 one time. We have two left over. So one and two twelfths, which we know simplifies. They're both even. So we're going to divide by two to get one and one sixth yards squared of garden space. All right, some of you are probably already going, do I really have to draw all these models? And the answer is no. You have to understand how the models work to understand how the actual algorithm works. So let's go back to this. You already know from our prior lessons that you can multiply numerator times numerator to get the numerator in your product, denominator times denominator get your product. So without that model, you could have gotten that answer, correct? All right. So when we work through today, um, we're going to actually be moving away from the models and using the standard algorithm. All right. So let's go to page 489 and let's look at a couple of these examples. So number three is a perfect example. If you don't want to draw a rectangle to find 
the area of two thirds foot and one fourth of a foot, then what you can do is you can just multiply because you know that area equals length times width. It doesn't matter which of these are which factor because of the commutative property of multiplication. So there you have your two factors. Your numerators multiplied together, two times one give you two. Your denominators multiplied together give you six. Look at it to see if it simplifies. It does. Two is your greatest common factor and you get one third of a yard squared or one third of a squared yard for your answer. All right. Now, number four has a little bit of a trick to it because they're telling you to find the area of a square with side lengths of five fourth inches. So what we know is that squares have four equal side lengths. So each one of them is the little greater than one whole. So five fourths would be a length and five fourths would also be a width measurement. All right. Multiplying your numerators, you get 25. Multiplying your denominators, you get 16. That is an improper fraction. When you divide, 16 goes into 25 one time with nine left over. One and nine sixteenths. All right. There we go. All right. And those are, don't forget, oops, these are inches, squared inches. All right. Moving down to your next examples. You are welcome to pause the video and do these on your own and then come back and check them or you can work through them with me. So, I'm looking at the model. They've already constructed it. What they didn't do was they didn't show, for example, this one is one fourth and one half. So we're multiplying those together. So one half would have been shaded this direction, one fourth this direction. So what they're doing is they're just coloring the product. So one out of eight equal parts is being shaded. So I can look at the model and see that it's one eighth, or I can do my length times width it doesn't matter which one you call which, and you get one eighth that way. But don't forget, these are square units. So this would be one eighth square feet. All right. The same thing with the next one. You can see right here that you have three rows of six. So your denominator is 18. Four are shaded. So four eighteenths. Or you can use your formula and you can multiply one of the sides by the other. All right. When I multiply, I get four eighteenths. You know what? They're both even. So <clears throat> I know they're both divisible by two. I know that four is not a factor of eight. So two is the greatest common factor. And that gives me two ninths as my final answer. Two ninths yards squared or square yards. All right. The next one, same thing. We could just set it up and multiply. 3 fourths times 3 fourths, I get 9 sixteenths square inches, and I know that that does not simplify. There's no common factors for 16 and 9 other than 1. All right, number 8, we can look at it and see that we have 5 rows of 10, so the denominator is 50, and we have 3 rows of, or sorry, 4 rows of 3, so our numerator is 12. Or we can just set it up. Some of you like to just go straight to the expression. Length times width. You get 12 fiftieths. All right. I know that that's going to simplify. They are both even. So I could at least start with by dividing them by two halves. So I get 6 25ths. And that 6 25ths does not simplify. So those are 6 25ths square centimeters. All right, number nine, I look at it. I see that I have three fourths by one fourth inch. That gives me three sixteenths inches squared. Or I could just look at it and see that I have four rows of four, 16 units in all. Three of them are shaded and I don't have to simplify it. All right, number 10, we're looking at two fifths and three fifths for our two side lengths. That gives me six, fifth, uh, sorry, six twenty fifths. 
All right. Another way to look at it, if you're not using the formula or not using the expression, is you've got five rows of five, so 25 squares and all in this um, one unit, and you have six of them shaded. Six twenty-fifths does not simplify, so your product is six twenty-five inches squared, which is the area of this rectangle. Actually, this one's a square. All right, number 11. Now we don't have a model. So you're welcome to draw them or you're welcome to use your uh, formula area equals length times width. So we have an area of a rectangle, five thirds by three fourths. All right. Hey, I just noticed something cool. I can cross reduce. These threes cancel out. They're both divisible by three. Three divided by three is one. So I get five fourths as my product. That is an improper fraction. It's greater than one whole. Let's convert it to a mixed number. Four goes into five one whole time. One would be left over out of force. So I have one and one fourth square feet. So this area is a little more than one square foot. All right, let's look at number 12. We are finding the area of a square with side lengths of 3 eighths inches. So squares, we know all sides are the equal length. So if the length is 3 inches, 3 eighths of an inch, so is the width. All right, 3 times 3, 9. 8 times 8 is 64. 9 64 of an inch squared. 9 64 square inches. All right, that would be very small. Number 13, find the area of a rectangle with side lengths of seven half centimeters and five fourths. So let's just set it up as seven halves times five fourths. I'm looking, I don't see any way to cross reduce. So let's just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. I get 35 eighths. That is more than one whole. So let's divide it out and see what mixed or whole number I get. Eight goes into 35 four times. Four times eight is 32. So I have three left over. That's my numerator and I'm working with eights. So I have four and three eighths square centimeters for my answer. Okay. So when we are finding fractional side lengths, and we're looking at area, if we're working with fractional side lengths with area, we just use our formula. We multiply length times width. We can use models if we need them, or we can just use our standard algorithm of multiplying those fractions together. All right, boys and girls, you have book work that you're welcome to do that you found in your learning packet that came home. Or if you prefer, you can go to lesson eight, six in your Google classroom and you can do the practice buddy that um, accompanies our Pearson program. Just make sure you do your work on paper and enter your answers on the computer. All right. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow for lesson eight, seven.